years of suffering from uh, Crohn's disease and, and from the debilitating side effects of the various prescription drugs that she was given to affect the cure, uh, Michelle discovered the power of marijuana to help ease her pain and her nausea. And uh, from that, she moved on to uh, advocacy and from advocacy to activism. And today, she's synonymous with uh, the discussion surrounding medical marijuana in Canada and, and synonymous, really, with the struggle for decriminalization and perhaps legalization of marijuana. And as I've said, we've heard from Michelle before, but what has earned her her additional seven minutes here today is that just a month or two ago, she presented herself to the American authorities at the border of British Columbia and the United States. Uh, once there, she was handcuffed, uh, shackled, uh, driven all the way to Seattle, where she was uh, put into a jail, paraded before a judge, and uh, I'll call her up on stage now to continue with this story. Uh, Michelle has been under an extradition order for about four years because she was indicted along with Mark Emery for selling seeds, marijuana seeds, to Americans. Michelle Rainey. Only Moses would give a blue-eyed blonde with big boobs a quickie. <laughs> now, if I take a little more than 10 minutes, I deserve this. Uh, since the very first time I attended Idea City in 2001, I dreamt of being on this stage. This has been my temple, my church, and my retreat. And I've wanted to be worthy of being here today in front of all of you. And it is a great honor and a great privilege to be here. As Moses told you, I have suffered from Crohn's disease for two decades. Conventional medicine did not work, not at all. Sadly, and I wish it did. Um, prednisone, pentaza, blew me up like a balloon, almost died. Then it was time to take control of my own health. And I have been using medicinal cannabis for the past, uh, since 1996. I've cut off all pharmaceuticals which I'm very proud of. Taking into consideration that uh, this is the 10-year anniversary of Idea City, it is also the 10-year anniversary of my activism career, and I quit a 10-year bank career to do this. I decided I wanted to tell all of you the gifts that Idea City has given me and Moses Neimer in relation to my activism career over the past 10 years. Of course, I had to write a few notes because this was going to get a little complicated. The first one is to be fearless. Did you know that public speaking is feared more than death by all of us? We're all terrified of public speaking. I took it upon myself to do a show a couple of years ago called Michelle's Medicinal Marijuana, a five to 10 minute shtick about pot and politics to get over my fear of public speaking. Producing myself, and I'd like to thank my husband, Jeff, who's watching by internet right now. Hi, honey, I love you. Yes, you can watch this whole thing by internet, apparently. That has helped me to overcome my public speaking fears. Number two, education. Listening to all of you, 350 presenters over the past 10 years has given me the ability to be able to be a better marijuana educator and convey a message that's so important for all of you to understand. Number three is inspiration. A few years ago, I put together a medicinal marijuana education package. And in this package, it consists of 33 pages. Yes, 33 pages to get a legal exemption to use marijuana in this country. Have you ever had to fill out 33 pages for Tylenol-3, Prozac, Ativan, Lorazepam? Probably not. It also includes the list of all the compassion clubs in this country, websites relating to all the different diseases proving cannabis' therapeutic value. This was a labor of love and inspired, of course, by Idea City. I also took it upon myself to start writing a column called Ask Medicinal Michelle in a magazine called Treating Yourself that's for patients by patients. 
And in this year, or actually this month, sorry, is edition of Zoomer magazine. I have a fantastic article in here called The Pot Option, relating to the Zoomer generation and options. Instead of pharmaceuticals, you have a choice. Number four, Idea City challenged me. Oh, has this ever challenged me? My God. It should have challenged all of us. To believe in myself, regardless of the continued negative stigmatization about marijuana. It's challenged me to be more aggressive and more forceful with telling all of you no harm has been done. Not one single person has ever died of marijuana. Not one. Number five, patience. <laughs> you have to have a lot of patience to do what I do. And Idea City taught me from environmentalists to politicians to inventors. When we saw this morning, things take time. Patience is a necessary evil. And I still can't figure out why marijuana is not legal yet, but that patience is still with me. Number six, courage. July 29th, 2005, the DEA came into Vancouver and arrested myself, Mark Emery, and Greg Williams. And all three of us have been facing extradition charges since that time. 99% of individuals sought for extradition are extradited. There is just no ands, if, buts, or maybes. It's plain and simple. You're extradited. My only hope, my Obi-Wan Kenobi, who is not here right now, Mr. Irwin Kotler, he happened to be the one that did sign my extradition papers as Justice Minister, Liberal, in 2004, sorry, 2005. And sadly, he is no longer our Justice Minister. We have a Conservative. So my Obi-Wan Kenobi couldn't help me now because he was my only hope. He's the only one who would have been able to reverse these charges. I decided to start negotiating with the U.S. government because I knew that I would be extradited, and I did not want to drain our economy any more than it already has been with unnecessary court fees. I mean, let's face it, we're in a global economic crisis. We don't need to be spending and wasting any more money when I am guilty. And what I did was, as Moses told you, went down to the US. Yes, in shackles. It was very interesting to stand under the Peace Arch border, and I don't know if you, any of you ever have been on the Peace Arch border. But I had to stand under it on the Canadian side at 8.30 in the morning, waiting, waiting for a couple of agents to come get me. Just standing there in the, in the middle, of, middle of this beautiful park, waiting for them to come get me. And of course, they came and got me, and I was processed at the border, fingerprinted, and then of course, put in these handcuffs and put in the car, as dangerous as I am with uh, using medical marijuana, taken down to Seattle, and there I was processed, and apparently uh, I was the nicest-looking, nicest-smelling convict they've had in a long time, considering what Seattle has in, the, in their marginalized prisons. And that's one thing that I'd like to tell you all. One in 100 people in the U.S. are in jail. This is a very, very sad state of affairs. 800,000 a year are convicted of marijuana offenses, and Canada could be going down that same route with Bill C-15, which would impose mandatory minimum sentences, something that has been proven in the US to be a complete failure and a complete waste of money. And I'd really like to see all of us get more active about our laws in Canada concerning not just marijuana, but drugs in general right now. I pled guilty to the offense of conspiracy to manufacture marijuana, count number one. All three charges at first were money laundering, uh, conspiracy, and yes, manufacturing marijuana from the internet seed selling business that Mark Emery has had from, or did have during that time. Number seven, I feel like David Letterman tonight. Awareness, Idea City has taught me awareness. To be aware of the world around me, to read, to investigate. Marijuana is in the news everywhere these days. Even Anderson Cooper on CNN right now has a program this entire week called America's High. Wow. That'll educate all of us. Is America really high? Or does America just need a little help from Canada right now and the rest of the world? That's a good question to ask ourselves sometime. Because I did marry an American in hope that we could all unite and be a better world. Number eight. 
Number eight, what is number eight? Accept the unknown. From every single year to year that I come to Idea City, things change. And they change drastically from extradition, a couple of divorces. And since the last time I've been here, I went home and I got diagnosed with a malignant melanoma. And from there, I had three major surgeries. I had an excavation of my back, six inch, four inch wide. Brought me right in. All you ladies out there got a free facelift, so now they're just pushed out a little bit more for nothing. Then I had a radical neck dissection surgery, sledding half my neck and all the lymph nodes being taken out. But I'm alive, and here I am a year later. And it's all thanks to being proactive with your health. It's so vitally important that we all take a look at ourselves and go, okay, what am I eating? Do I need to be taking vitamins? Do I need to be exercising? Uh, do I take a look at the pharmaceuticals that I'm using? Do I really need to be using them? Can I wean myself off of them? Is there any way I can find to live a longer life and a better life? Isn't that what Zoomer's all about, longevity, right? And here I have only 16 more seconds. All right, number nine, we're almost done. Number nine, friendship. Idea City has given me the ultimate gift of friendship. Moses, Dr. Jamie, Anita, I can go on, Marilyn. There are so many wonderful people that I have met over the past decade that have influenced me, that have mentored me to be a better medicinal cannabis ad advocate. And uh, number 10. Number 10, Idea City has given me the gift to dream. All of us have dreams and we still should at whatever age we are. We all need to dream, and my dream is to be Canada's cannabis ambassador. <laughs> now, hey, come on, medicinal? Let's face it. Can we get a little patriotic? We can refuel our economy. There's so many things we can do right now if we do legalize marijuana. And it's medicinally, yes, we need to tax it, we need to regulate it, because we're going down the same road as prohibition, alcohol prohibition, that's something that we don't want to do. Thank you all very much, and I look forward to talking to you after. Thanks, um, I'm still a little unclear about what kind of sanctions you face, because okay. given the well, you only gave volume, me ten minutes. Given the volume of seeds that were sold, yes. Apparently, you and Mark were liable to life imprisonment. Yes, for right? four years, the threat was 30 years to life. 30 years and that's not life. something that... Uh, so you've effectively done a plea bargain, have you? Yes, I have. So what will happen is July 17th, I will turn to the U.S. without, thank goodness, having to go through the handcuffs and all the fingerprinting again. And I will face a sentence of what I hope will be two years probation in my own country. I will not be able to travel the U.S. for five years. But sadly, Mark Emery will be going down to plead guilty himself. And it's time for him to do that and get this over with. I'm sure that we'll be able to get him a treaty transfer. And then he'll be able to come up here and possibly serve a lesser sentence. And I'm crossing my fingers for that. This has been a, this has been a heck of a decade of activism for me. And I will say I'm totally blessed and completely grateful to be alive. You know, I love life. And all of us need to start sharing and be a part of our communities. Get out and vote. Bake an extra batch of cookies for your neighbors. Talk to each other. We're all forgetting to do that. Come on. You know, no one talks to each other. I'm in Toronto, and what am I? You know, I, I have no idea why people just don't talk to each other. Life is so short. And, you know, according to, what is it, May 27th, 2012? Oh, my goodness. We don't have much time. <laughs> so we better get at it, okay? Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Idea City is my church, it's my retreat, it's my soul. This is the only thing I do all year long. I save all my pennies to come here. I don't do anything else. I don't go on holidays to Jamaica or Mexico or anything like that. This is what I do every year.